Hi, everybody. My name is Shannon Sarna. I'm editor of The Nosher, if we haven't met before here or elsewhere. I'm so excited because tonight we have Jeffrey Eisner, who we've, we've crowned as the nice Jewish boy, the king of instant pot cooking, um, who is about to finish up his third cookbook. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm about, to start, I'm about to start shooting it, yes. Um, ab absolutely amazing. Um, and tonight he is going to be sharing with us um, all of his Instant Pot secrets and showing us how to do a perfect Jewish brisket in the Instant Pot. Um, he's the creator of Pressure Look Cooking. I'll share his website in the chat. He's been featured on the Food Network, Good Morning America, and Rachel Ray. His first cookbook, the Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook, became an international bestseller. And in April of 2021, he released his second cookbook, The Lighter Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook. Sounds like everybody needs to order those immediately and send them as gifts and look forward to his third cookbook. What's the next one going to be called? The Simple Comforts Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook, All Comfort nice. Food. Love it. I love it. <laughs> um, fantastic. So just a few ground rules to share. If you've, if you've been in our Nosher cooking classes before, you know that there's always lots of questions and that's great. We're doing something a little bit different with our high holiday series, which is that you are welcome to ask questions in the last 15 minutes of class. We're going to let our instructors focus on instructing and cooking and teaching for us. So if you can hold your questions um, until, until the last 15 minutes, that would be fantastic. Um, and you can message myself or Jeffrey in the meantime, but we're going to hold the questions. And the other part of that I'm going to ask is that let's stay away from replacement questions, right? Like we're here, we're learning brisket tonight. That's what we're going to focus on. We can certainly ask some other questions about how to cook things in, in, in an instant pot, but like we're cooking brisket. That's what we're going to focus on. If you don't want to cook brisket, that's fine. You're welcome to enjoy it. Enjoy it for the ride. I know Jeffrey is going to be a delight and a hoot. So without Further ado, I will hand it over to the king of Instant Pot Cooking, Jeffrey. Thank you so much again for sharing your time and expertise with us. Thank you, Shannon, for having me. You are a, a real gem, and I'm, it's a thrill to be here. I, I Look, I'll just start off by saying real quickly that uh, if you would have told me a few years ago that I'd be standing in front of a bunch of my tribe and teaching people how to make a brisket, um, I would have never believed you. But my grandmother, may she rest in peace, would be very proud. So I, it's a pleasure and a thrill to be here. Um, okay, so the high holidays, or I have to say the high holidays are coming up pretty soon. They, they seem to just always creep up amongst us, don't they? And uh, who can keep track? I can never keep track or remember when they're going to be because of the, the Jewish calendar. It's always a little different, like Hanukkah and all that. But what to me, the Jewish holidays and by Judaism in general is about the food. I love the food. And really at the high holidays, especially, well, specifically Rosh Hashanah, you know, Yom Kippur, you get, I look at it like Rosh Hashanah is the exciting one. You get like all the good stuff like brisket and, and, and like, you know, uh, kugel and stuff like that. And on, you know, Yom Kippur, it's like got the bagels. Eh, you got the bagels to break the fast. I'm like, whatever. I'm all about the brisket. I'm all about Rosh Hashanah. And today we are going to make some brisket, some beautiful brisket, but we're not going to do it in the oven. Who wants to do it in the oven? That's boring. It takes longer. You got to check on it. You know, you know, he, he, there's, there's a little, I'm already neurotic enough as it is. I want something to be done very simply, very quickly, and very tenderly. We're going to do this in my new friend here. I'm, I'm not sure if a bunch of you have one of these in your kitchen yet, but they're all the rage. Called an Instant Pot. Oh, the Instant Pot. The Instant Pot, if you've never heard of one, is an electric pressure cooker. I'm not talking about the pressure cookers back in the day when like, you know, they were really scary and looked like scary contraption devices you put on your stove and you had to screw them shut like it's some sort of mechanical thing you'd see in a workshop, which I, I let my partner deal with all that stuff. I, I, don't, I don't touch those types of things, you know? This is safe, it's convenient, it's easy, and it's one pot cooking. We're not doing it in an oven, we're doing it in an instant pot. You wanna see how to make the easiest brisket in the world? Because you're about to right now. So shalom, my friends. <laughs> Let's get going. Okay, first off, I want to read you a little story. As Shannon mentioned, I wrote cookbooks, and that's a shameless little plug here. Uh, the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, the Orange Book, and the Lighter Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook, the Blue Book, which is lighter recipes 
This is more, a little more indulgent ones with some light recipes in it, but my brisket recipe is in the first book. Um, I try to cover lots of different cuisines in my books. It's not specifically Jewish focused, but there are definitely some Jewish classics like this Jewish brisket. The thing I love about these books is that they're color step-by-step -step photos for every single step. So there's no guesswork. It's showing you what you should be doing. So if, you know, if it's asking you, you're watching that show Schitt's Creek, what does folding the cheese mean? It's gonna show you what folding in the cheese means. There's no cheese in this dish though, of course. We're gonna keep it kosher, all right? So um, look at how pretty this is gonna look when it's done. I'll, I'll let a little secret in for you right here. I can never do something this pretty. I have a food stylist who makes it look pretty. What you're seeing is exactly what I cooked, my own hands, and it was made in the pot, but I'm not good at taking pictures or making things look pretty on a plate. I'm, and I don't even have the patience. I go right to the thing and I'm like, let me just eat it, you know? So once upon a time, there was some Jewish brisket. With once upon a time, it was an instant pot. So we're gonna do this right now. First thing I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna bear with me a little bit. I have one camera, it's on a makeshift tripod here. And here's my brisket. I get my brisket from Costco. I don't keep kosher, but obviously if you are, you could go to a kosher butcher. And they have pretty large cuts of brisket. Here we go, I've been letting this one sit out for a little bit. I like to come kind of almost to a room temperature sometimes. And I slice it in half. Well, the first half is actually already cooked in the instant pot here because we're not going to make this, this entire process while it cooks. We're going to, as soon as I start, you know, putting it in the instant pot to pressure cook, we're going to switch to the one that's already finished. So I slice it in half. This is about a five pound brisket. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. The first thing I want to do, this looks like a slice of pizza. It's like brisket pizza. So when Shannon was saying, can you do a substitute? You could do brisket pizza. There we go. What I want to do is take some kosher salt because of course, we, why wouldn't we use kosher salt in this situation? And salt it up a little bit on both sides. And just rub hey, it in. Jeffrey, you can I'm gonna chime in with one question that I know everyone's gonna ask. Do, yes. you, it, do you buy a first cut or a second cut? That's a great question. We say that again, what was the question? A first cut or a second cut? A first cut? cut or the second cut, yeah. Do you mean like a point cut or a flat cut? Well, I think, I think at least in the kosher world, we say it's either like the first cut, which is like usually a little less fatty or the deco sometimes it's called. Okay. I'm going to move this up. So I don't really, I, look, I feel so terrible. My Hebrew school teachers would be very angry at me. I don't really, never, I never heard that term first cut. Oh, cut. interesting. Do so you, so, you buy the full brisket and then you cut it in half? So what I do is I look, so the way I know my briskets is either point cut or flat cut. And a point cut is usually fattier meat. And okay. um, whereas a flat cut is more less fatty and a little thicker yes. and it's easier to slice. Yes, so, yes, okay. Okay, so I typically like for a brisket, for a, my brisket that I do, if I was making a pastrami, I would go with like a point cut. I want it a little fattier. If I'm gonna go with a brisket, I'm more, more of a flat cut. Does that okay. make sense? Okay, yes, okay. yes. So I would call, I would call the, 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 the less fatty one the first cut, uh, which is the flat cut. Flat cut is the first cut and the point one is the second cut. Okay, so we're gonna go with like a first cut, but I wanna make sure it's kind of marbled. You see like there's still like some strands in there. You don't want like something that you don't see any of that in there because that's important yeah. to have. You want there to be some juice. This is gonna get the juices flowing when it's cooking. You want all that, you know what I mean? What do you can typically I just, use? Can I just it? add one more note just for the, everybody watching? Please do, watching, not, please not do. For you. And then I'll shut up, I'm sorry. No, I enjoy this. Okay, great. All right, fantastic. I wish we could, you know, do this in person together. Um, if you're asking for the recipe, I'll post it again in the chat, but I just want to remind you that it's both on our website, thenasher.com, but it's also in your email. So the email where you got the Zoom link will have this recipe. So if you're not sure where to look for it, it's already in your email. That's, that's amazing. It's right there. Just go to your email and find it. Okay. I'll post it again one last time though in the chat, or again, go to thenasher.com. I'm done now. I love that. Thank you, Shannon. All right, so from here, I've seasoned up my uh, brisket both sides with some kosher salt, just rubbed it in. And now I'm gonna go to my pot, okay? Now, I'm gonna tilt it up so you can see it a little bit. There's a lid on here. You unscrew it, makes a little sound like R2-D2. And by the way, you can rest your lid on many of these models. There's a few instant pot models these days. Um, you can see this little thing here, this little notch. See that? There you go. It rests right here so the lid will just stay there if I wanted to. A lot of people don't know that. So I'm just letting you know, I'm gonna you can do it on either side. What I wanna do is turn my pot on because your Instant Pot is now going to act as if it's a, like a, basically a pot on the stove because there's a heating element in there. I'm gonna hit the saute button on my pot 
And then if your bot, your model has a start button, hit that. If it doesn't have a start button, after a few moments of doing nothing, it'll get going. So you hit that, make sure the temperature is on high. You adjust that by hitting the saute button again, or you hit the, uh, the temperature button. It depends on your model. I explain all of this in my books and on my YouTube videos. And we can get into the specifics of that in a moment. So one of the best things, while this is heating up, this will take about just a few moments to heat up. One of the best things about an Instant Pot versus say a slow cooker, which I feel like this is totally replaced the slow cooker in many homes. It certainly has mine. I cannot even remember the last time I used a slow cooker at this point. Um, the, uh, these will, this will basically, like I said, this will, you can saute in it versus it where if you were slow cooking, you couldn't saute. You'd have to do it on the stove first then transfer it and then wait eight hours for something to be done. Nope, I can do it right in here. So it heats up relatively fast. The pot inside, this is called the liner pot. So let me just show you really quickly. This is your instant pot. The thing on the bottom, that giant disc is the heating element. Always make sure your liner pot, which is stainless steel, which it comes with, is in there before you do anything. A lot of people don't realize this needs to be in there. They think that they just cook on that. Nope, if you do that, you're gonna ruin your pot. Things are gonna spill out of the bottom. Always make sure your liner pot's in there. So after just a few moments of this heating up, what I'm going to wanna do is I'm gonna wanna take my brisket here and I'm gonna to wanna to sear it on both sides for about two minutes. And that's literally the most work this recipe involves. Literally, that is it. You don't even honestly even have to sear it if you don't wanna sear it. This gives it a little bit of a nice little edge there, which you know I enjoy, and it, but after it cooks, it gives it a little bit of some texture. Um, but it, it, again, it's, it's really kind of an optional thing, but it's just what I've always grown up to do. You could also, if you don't really wanna do it in the pot, because you're gonna have a little bit of limited space. This is a six quart instant pot, by the way. Um, I made the other one in an eight quart, which is what the finished product is. That one's already done, you'll see that at the end. Um, but you could do it in either one, really. Or because this only gets so hot, if you want to give it a real crazy hot sear, you could just do it on the stove and then transfer it after it's done searing right back to the uh, instant pot itself. But I wanna show you how convenient this thing is. Not everybody even has a stove. Sometimes you're in a mobile home, sometimes you're renovating your kitchen, and you can just wanna do it like, you can make a brisket in a Motel 6, okay? That's how amazing this is, a Jewish brisket. So let's do it. It's pretty much hot enough. I'm gonna just take my uh, meat here, and then just put it inside, and let it sear just very quickly. You hear it's a little bit sizzly at the moment, for a couple of minutes on each side. And uh, Shannon, by the way, do we have any questions so far that you would like to feel about while we're just doing this? I'm happy to answer anything so far. If not, I'll keep talking. I think, I think um, it would be great if, do you have any um, recommendations for what brand or kind of Instant Pot you would, tell, you would tell people to get? Okay, so, okay, great question. The brand is Instant Pot. Just like you know, if you got a hot tub, it was a jacuzzi, but you, the name jacuzzi always stick, stuck with it no matter what brand it was. You know what I mean? So it's the instant pot. I would always say if you're going to get an electric pressure cooker, get an instant pot. It's the, the, the Cadillac of all the models. The, the, you know, Crock-Pot does a model now. Uh, the, there's all these different ones, the, the little other brands. And I'm not taking away from them, but I know that this brand is, specializes in doing what it does best, which is pressure cooking. So get that one. Now there's multiple models within, they all have the same basic functions. They come in really three sizes, three quart, six quart, eight quart. I strongly suggest going for at least a six quart. A three quart's good, even if you're on your own, a three quart's good for like sides and you could, you could get away with it, but you're never gonna be able to fit like a brisket in there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. go with a six quart and if there's some leftovers, there's some leftovers. It's very affordable, we're talking about, it depends on where you get it from, but you could find deals as cheap as like 50, 60 bucks for one of these things for a six quart. It's a steal for what all the things that this thing can do. Not only can it do roasts, it can do pastas, one pot pastas, not straining anything, rice, chicken dishes, seafood, yogurts. What can it do? Can't really deep fry, can't really crisp, but it has an air fryer lid that you can put on top so you can crisp. I feel like I should be getting paid by Instant Pot at this point, don't you? I, 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 say, I feel like yeah. I'm in Costco. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Costco selling people, and I don't work for them, by the way. I, I don't. I'm just this. I, this is how easy this thing has made my life. Okay. And I don't even. And have I, I I saw that you have a couple of other sort of very Jewish inspired recipes. What other traditional Jewish dishes do you like to make in an Instant Pot? I love to make. I like to actually make a noodle pudding in there. You can, because it's called a pot and pot situation when you put a separate pot inside the instant pot, put a little water on, and then it basically pressure steams and bakes your uh, noodle pudding. But before I get oh. going on that, it's time to flip this over real quick. 
I got one side going, just a quick sear like that, and I'm just gonna do the other side. Now, you see some of the fat on here? You can absolutely slice this off prior if you wish. That's totally fine. I like to kind of leave it on when it cooks. I think it creates more flavor, and I like to slice the fat off afterwards. But everybody has their own ways on how they like to do their brisket. Uh, it's just how I like to do mine. One of my favorite things to make is stuffed cabbage. My grandma, Lil, may she rest in peace. She was my inspiration for cooking. Uh, she always made stuffed cabbage during the holidays. Passover was, it was a big thing to have those especially. And she'd always say in the kitchen, never again. I'm not making these ever again, ever. And of course the next year she would do it all over again. Make sure, uh, I miss my grandma a little. Um, but I, for my cookbook, I actually paid homage to her and I made something very easy. And in lieu of doing uh, a stuffed cabbage, which is a little more involved with having to stuff everything and all that jazz, uh, I made it easier and I made Grandma Lil's unstuffed cabbage stew which is basically a stuffed cabbage, but in a stew and not having to stuff anything. It's all the flavor for you to savor without doing any of the work. I, lo I, I love know. that. I love that. Yeah, I saw okay. somebody, um, a few people sh share that one makes their chicken soup in the Instant Pot, which I know you can do. Oh yeah, another, I have questions for that. Um, and somebody else shared that it's great to proof breads before, uh, to like before baking them. Have you done That's that? I have, and it's miraculous for that as well. It does so many things. They call it a multi-cooker, and it truly does live up to its name. Okay, so we're mostly seared here. We got a nice like little slight sear going, and I'm happy with this. What I wanna do now is I'm gonna kill the heat of my pot really quickly by hitting the cancel button. All right, and now you'll see the bottom of my pot. You can also be careful. I'm pro at doing it this at this point. You might want to use some uh, mitts or something. I know how not to burn myself. You'll see it's a little bit, the bottom has got a little bit of gunk on there at this point from putting the a brisket on and searing it with the salt on the kosher salt. Um, you can just give it a quick rinse really quickly and then put it back in there. But in this situation, I'm going to be okay because I'm going to make sure we're going to get everything up. What you can also do is you can just grab like a wooden spoon or a mixing spoon or a spatula and just kind of scrape it up a little bit if you want. I think it's good to keep it in there a little bit because it keeps some of the salt going in there and you have a little bit of extra flavor. So now what I want to do is create that classic style sweet and sour brisket sauce, Jewish brisket sauce, that um, I personally come to know and love very, very well. And it looks very iffy at first. I hope that not too many of my fellow tribe members are judging me on this one. I, I think a lot of you might find this one familiar, but here's what we do, what I do came down to me from my family. Start with some water. In this case, by the way, I have the recipe. Normally, I would have be doing this in two batches um, because I sliced this brisket in half and I pre-cooked it ahead of time. So everything I'm giving you measurement-wise is going to be half of what you see on the recipe, okay? I'm going to do three quarters of a cup of water. It's good old-fashioned water. And three quarters of a cup of ketchup. I know. Some people might be like, what? And I, I'm already going to see some people leave the chat at this point, but trust me, it's amazing. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of the ketchup in the water. I know this looks like something like a three-year-old kid would just like mix together on a class so far, but stay with me. I'm going to add in <clears throat> about a third of a cup of dark brown sugar to the mix. And always make sure your dark brown, whenever something calls for a certain measurement of dark brown sugar, you pack it really good in there. Uh, about a third of a cup of white vinegar. And about like some crushed garlic. Like you can use a clove. You, you can never have too much garlic in my opinion for anything. Um, that's like the Italian in me speaking and I'm not even Italian. So just put that in there. I'm thinking about a clove of crushed garlic. It's about a teaspoon or so. I actually didn't have that one at all from the recipe. I just kept it as it is. So now what I want to do is I just want to take a whisk with these ingredients in there. I just want to whisk this up so it's going to become a sauce. I know at first you're like, what is this guy doing? If you've never seen this before, but if you've seen it before, you've done it before, you know what I'm saying. So Let me know. Your, uh, your sauce is just water, ketchup, sugar, garlic. That's it. And vinegar. Oh, and vinegar and vinegar. Okay. That's literally, it's just, we call, I mean, it's a sweet and sour sauce. That's literally all my sauces. And I know on, when I first was taught this recipe from my mother, I'm like, that's disgusting. This is gonna be disgusting. How wrong I was and when everything changes when this thing is cooked, it becomes something magical. It's truly a transformation. Okay, 
So we have our sauce. Here, um, here's just one more question, which I think is a very good question because you said you have the recipe. Do would the does the full recipe fit in the instant pot? Yes, it would fit in the instant pot, and I'll show you what I'll okay. explain All exactly right. what, it, what it what it would do. Um, otherwise, what I want to do, Shannon and friends, is right now I gotta find my trivet. There it is. Instant pot comes with a trivet. Okay, put it in there. Put that trivet in the, inside the pot. I want to now take my brisket back, lay it on the trivet. I like to do it, oops, put this in here. I like to do it fat side up, just because I feel like that way the fat courses through the meat more. It might be an urban legend or a myth, but it makes me feel like it does, and I feel like it creates richer flavor. Again, we'll slice the fat off after it's done, or you can slice the fat off prior to cooking. It's completely up to you. You don't want to really eat the fat. Well, some people do. Um, now I'm going to take my onions. I'm taking, in this situation, about two yellow onions that I just roughly chopped, okay, and put it on top. Now, if I was doing the full recipe that my book calls for, we'd have four onions, obviously. And what I want to do now is I want to take my sauce and pour it on top of the brisket and the onions, and it's going to just drape to the bottom. Because I halved everything, now let's say I didn't. This is a six-quart pot, by the way. I would then take my other half of brisket that I sliced, put it on top, and repeat. Two more onions and the other remaining amount of this sauce since I halved it. All right? Does that make sense? Are you guys with me on that? Yeah, that's perfect. That's, that totally makes sense. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So that's where you guys, this is it. This is all I had to do to create the most succulent star of the show at your holiday table, your holiday table. That's it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my lid right on top of my Instant Pot. Hear that sound? I'm gonna now take it and do this. Secure it, it's locked. And that is all I have to do in terms of preparation here. Go back down on my control panel and hit the pressure cook button. You'll find it on there. Every model, it's in a little bit of a different spot. I want to go on this, guys, for about 75 minutes. You can go for 65 minutes if you want, uh, but 75 is going to make it super, like, fall apart tender. And you just adjust the time by hitting the plus or minus buttons. So an hour and 15 minutes is 75 minutes. Hit that start button, and that's all I had to do. Now, this is going to come to pressure relatively quickly. What exactly is happening right now? Let's, let's, let's see what's going on in here. This is, again, think of this as a pot on the stove, except we have a lid on top where there's really no room for steam to escape, except through this little hole right here. The pot itself is sealed. This little nozzle is where the steam will release out of when the time has come to finish the meal, um, to release, I should say, the steam. But it's in the sealing position right now, meaning steam cannot escape. What's going to happen is right now, the pot is going to begin to bubble all of the liquid that we put in there is going to get thin out and it's going to become this amazing lush delicious gravy it's going to start steaming and steam's going to start coming out of this little hole right over here and it's going to finally start shaking and pop up did you ever see the movie the money pit with a turkey the little thing goes boop, out of the turkey when it goes to the window that's what happens here it pops up and then the lid is locked and secured is a locking mechanism so it cannot open you're safe you're good to go um and then it's basically, think of it like a tea kettle coming to like whistling. That's exactly what's happening there. It'll finally pop up. There's nowhere for the steam to go. Then the time is going to begin to count down for what we set it for. So during this process, the display is going to just say on on it. It's not going to show that time right away that we set it for. So we might get frustrated at first and be like, wait, well, I'm confused. Why does it just say on? Why doesn't it say an hour and 15 minutes or 75 minutes like Jeffrey said? Because right now when it says on, it's building the pressure. And then once it builds the pressure and this thing pops up, the pot will register and understand that because it's so smart. Then it begins to count down um, from the time we set it for. So during this time, you can set the table. You could do whatever you want. You catch up on your favorite TV shows. Uh, watch, catch up on the Nasher, your favorite articles. I heard there's a really good one about the nicest Jewish boy who does Instant Pot. That's a good one. Uh, things like that. And uh, it, it couldn't be any easier. When the pot is done cooking, it's going to beep and let you know. You can also just set a timer on your iPhone, on your watch, whatever, uh, and just keep it a mental note of it because you, it, it's literally so easy to forget that you're cooking something in here. But it, at the same time, even if you do, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be fine. It automatically switches to a keep warm position when it's done, you're good. 
So when you do money recipes, like meat recipes, like a roast or a brisket, you typically want when the, when the pot is done pressure cooking, when the cycle is complete, to do what we call a natural release. Meaning we don't release the steam from the pot immediately. Rather, we let the heat of the pot kind of dissipate on its own inside as it cools down a bit and for about 20, 15 to 20 minutes or so. Then we finish with a quick release. The reason we do that is because when we do the release, sometimes it has a tendency to suck a lot of air out very quickly out of the pot, and we don't want anything to dry out in there. Um, you know what I mean? We don't want that to happen. So that is why for many meat recipes, we do a natural release. So all in all, you're looking at for an hour, um, between 65 to 75 minutes of pressure cooking here. This is gonna take about 10 minutes to come to pressure. And by the way, what I said about that, when it's something's on its building pressure, in my cookbooks, I always account for that, the pressure building time. There's a timing bar, it's telling you exactly how long it's gonna take. The prep time, the saute time, but which in this case was the searing time, the pressure building time, which is what's happening right now, the pressure cook time and natural release time, if that applies. That doesn't apply to most recipes. Um, so you're looking at like, an hour and 15 plus a 20 minute natural release is an hour and 35 minutes, 90 minutes to do a brisket. That is usually unheard of. Usually, you know, this takes three hours or so. And typically people do it the day before and then they reheat it the next day. At least that's what I would do when I did it in the oven. So when I was on the Food Network, I was in the first ever Hanukkah challenge, which was super fun, it was hosted by Molly Ye. And I was up against three professional real deal chefs and this schlubby guy right over here um, I felt like if they make a mistake, how did I get on the show? I think this is because I turned my Jewish card up to 11 in the audition and they were like, you're the, you're the Jewish guy, basically. I'm like, okay. So I was in there and we had to do a challenge, a brisket in 90 minutes. And I was like, give me the instant pot and I'm going to do this. And they were like, yeah, we don't have one of those, but we do have an old school pressure cooker. I'm like, I'm not touching one of those. I never used one before. I'm not touching it. Uh, so what I did in that situation was I actually, they had a meat grinder and I, just like, I'm gonna make brisket meatballs. I make brisket meatballs. I actually, and I, and I also use this exact same sauce for the meatballs and I serve them over like egg noodles. If I had my druthers a bit better and I had a little more time to pull myself together instead of just 90 minutes of madness and mayhem, I would have probably done like a meatball, uh, I'm sorry, like a brisket meatball Reuben, like, you know, hero or something like that. That would have been really, really cool. But I wasn't thinking that way. But anyway, the, bris the meatballs themselves were absolutely delicious. Not necessarily how I want to eat this over a pasta with the sauce. The sauce is more perfect for like a roast classic style brisket. Okay, so now let's say our everything is completed. Let's fast forward because, you know, I'm talking a lot over here. And I'm going to now swap with my other instant pot where it's already done and the steam has already been released because i did this a little earlier so there's nothing to release at this point so let's just say i've released the steam and here's my brisket this is the other half of that brisket i just put in already cooked and voila you have the trivet here and i'm going to now take my <clears throat> cutting board. I'm gonna put it on the cutting board. I'm a terrible cutter, by the way, I'm not very good at it. And so please be kind to me and don't judge my knife skills too much. What I wanna do now is I'm going to take the brisket, which is very hot, out of the pot and I can just stab it with this and lay it on my cutting board. Whoop, don't slick away too much there, don't slip away. And now I'm left with Trivet and my onions and my amazing gravy. I can easily take this out. And now what I want to do, what I like to do, excuse me, is to thicken my gravy up a little bit. You don't have to do this. My mom likes it really thin. I like it a little bit thicker. I just go back to the pot. I hit the saute button again. And this is going to begin to bubble now, everything that's going on in the pot. In the meantime, what do we do to thicken? One of the, my secret, well, it's not really a secret. One of my favorite things to do, to me it's magical, is creating something we know as a cornstarch slurry. Cornstarch, by the way, is gluten-free. I'm taking about, you know, one and a half to two tablespoons. You can use more or less, and I'm gonna match that with equal parts water, okay? Put it in there, and then I'm going to stir it up, and it's gonna go from like a cement-like consistency 
to a nice smooth consistency. Whenever doing a slurry, by the way, you never want to, well, I would say adding cornstarch to thicken into something, you never want to just dump the cornstarch directly into something, like this, this pot of what we have, this amazing gravy. Because if you do, it's going to just clump up into these like weird balls, and it's going to be super awkward, and it's not going to meld at all into it. You need to temper it with a little bit of equal parts water, or you, I could have actually just poured some of this in here and done it as well. And then it's going to be nice and thick and creamy, just like this. And then we're going to stir it right into the pot. And then we are going to be in business. It's going to thicken up miraculously. As it begins to give it some heat, it's going to begin to bubble. And I'm going to add it in there. I just want to add just a touch more water. It's a little thick. And then we're going to be good to go on that. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. So I'm just going to wait for this to start going. In the meantime, I'm going to take my brisket and I'm going to slice it up a bit. Now, one of the most important things with the brisket is you kind of always want to slice against the grain. And if you don't know what that means, it means that you're going to see these strands at the top here. You want to make sure I have something. Let me see in here. I keep getting blocked with things. Oh, oh, look at that. My, my, my words are popping up when I, I'm speaking now. It's like super crazy. Oh, how interesting. Okay. You don't want to go in the same direction as the strands. You want to go in the opposite, hence against the grain. And we're going to slice this up. Uh, look at how tender, look at how tender this is. Please look at this. How tender is this brisket? It's just like butter. Barbara, Barbara, are you out there? Are you watching, Barbara? I made it just for you. It's like butter. I'm really pulling out all the Jewish stops tonight. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm not the best carver, but you can, guys, look at how tender this is. And this was done in the, such less time than you normally would. Oh, look at that. Delicious. I'm gonna have to try a piece in two seconds, but, but right now, oh my gosh, it's so good. Now, let's say I've, I've cut it all up. Well, I'll just keep cutting in the meantime, but I really need my dad here to do this. I feel like it's like a tradition that my dad did all the carving and cutting of everything. Look at how delicious this looks. I know, maybe I, I shouldn't keep like saying that. It makes me sound like I'm bragging. No, it, look, it really looks per It really looks perfect. Look at how, doesn't that look great? Yeah. This yeah. is also important, guys, to get a first cut <laughs> if you can. Thanks for teaching me something today, Shannon, by the way. I yeah. appreciate that. Well, we uh, should do a whole coffee talk about the, the first the first cut. It's neither first nor a cut. Discuss. I always thought the first cut happened when a guy's eight days old. But oh, just kidding. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to go right back to the pot right over here. And we're starting to bubble. Great. Excellent. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to take that slurry, and we're going to thicken this up. Okay. I'm just going to pour this in and stir as I pour in the slurry, and it's going to thicken into a gravy-like consistency. Not super thick, if I wanted it to be thicker, I can make it thicker, but it's going to be just the right consistency that I want it to be, more of a gravy-like one now, and look at this. It tastes so good. See this now, it's more like how I would want it to be. It's more gravy-like, it's not too thick, but if I wanted it thicker, I added a little bit more of a cornstarch slurry. Um, what I would normally do now is I would take my brisket meat, I would put it back in there and let it marinate inside there until it's ready to serve. So the, the meat's constantly going to be juicy. It's going to have be rich with flavor from all that amazing sauce. But for the, in the interest of time here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a nice plate of this stuff. Oh, and I'm actually going to turn the pot off now because we're bubbling. We're good to go. All right. And I'm going to serve myself some brisket. By the way, before I do that, I want you to see this pot right over here. Do you see this? Right now it's trying, it's coming to pressure. Do you see the steam coming out? It's kind of like, do you see it in front of my face? I don't know if you can really see it, but it's steam is coming out like it's about to come to pressure from that time I said. Are you getting a uh, brisket facial? Yes, I am getting a brisket facial. My whole house smells like Long Island right now. It smells <laughs> like Long Island, it smells so good. I love it. And this is gonna pop up any moment. And when that happens, then we're gonna begin counting down from the time we set it for pressure-wise. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick little example of what is, what's gonna happen in that situation. All right, so now back to this. I'm gonna serve myself some of this brisket. Uh, it just popped up, the pin just popped up. Okay, see the steam stop coming out, it's locked, we're good to go. Okay. So now, I should bring my, 
see, there's some fat on this one still, and I like it, so I'm eating it. What am I gonna? What are you gonna do about it? Fight me. I like the fat on my brisket a little bit, as long as it's not too tough. But you can always cut it off. Now I'm gonna take this amazing sauce, and I'm gonna drape it over it. See, does this look like that? Does this look like ketchup and water anymore? No. It looks like this amazing, beautiful, wonderfully fragrant sweet and sour sauce. It's the right consistency. It's exactly what it should be. And now it's time to try it out. All right, here we go. Okay, I don't even, I don't even need a knife. I can literally just cut this with a fork. Oh, wait, I'm not get this. You need to have it on me, right? Whoops, I just turned my screen off. My back? <laughs> I think I accidentally just... Am I back? Now you are. Okay, yeah. I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. I accidentally... You wanted to give us the full Jewish grandparent experience, right? Can I, you see yes. me? Can you see me? I'm, am I, I here? Now we got I you. I am just as bad with technology as anybody else. So here we go. Let's try it out. I don't even need teeth, okay? I don't even need teeth to eat this. That's how soft and tender this is. I don't need teeth. Like, well, it helps. They come in handy, don't get me wrong. But it is so tender, that sauce, that sauce on the brisket, I'm telling you right now, serve this with whatever you prefer, some mashed potatoes, whatever you want. It's going to be on another level of delish. Oh, my gosh. But it would be funny if you took a bite and then you spit it out and said it was gross. You know. it, it would it would be totally funny, but you know, even with, with what you're doing, when I'm trying to like you know tell you guys that this is good, even if it tasted like that, I would pretend it tasted amazing. So speaking of which, Richard, hey Richard, are you around? <laughs> My partner, he's upstairs. I want him to try this food. My dog would try it, but I'm not gonna get him any. Come here, you wanna say hi, everybody, Banjo? This is Banjo, the Norwich Terrier. Um, he, anytime he's, he's been so good this entire time. He's been standing at my feet, just staring up, looking at the food. He could see him licking his lips, looking at the plate. Can't give you anybody. I'm sorry. It's, I don't think it's too dog friendly. Um, but I want to, I want to see if I can get my partner down here really quickly to give you a quick little sample. Hey, Richard! You guys can start putting your questions in the chat and I'll start fielding your questions. And we'll have Jeffrey start answering them. Isn't he okay. the best? Don't you want him? So Richard's is, my partner. Is coming? Richard's coming here. I want to okay. give him some brisket. Andrew, I'm sorry you don't get any, darling. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna feed him. Let me move it come on. Here, come here, come here. <laughs> this is the brisket I just made in the instant pot. How is it? Oh my god, it's so good. This brisket's always amazing. I want some of this. It's so good. Now, put the pieces, like I said, in the sauce so they stay nice and marinated at all times. It's the best thing to do. If I wanted to make this the day before, although I don't even know why I need to, you can literally just do it the same day. You can just literally take the pot when it's sitting in there, pull this liner pot out of the Instant Pot, put some foil on it, pop it in your fridge, and then put it back in here to transport it to the place you're going if it's not at home, and then just reheat it up on saute. Done. Oh my gosh, this is really good, isn't it? You, have to give me something. you want some more? I didn't cut the fat off today, like I said before. I mean, like, you can cut the fat off, but this fat is like butter. Yeah, so it's really good. There you go. Mm. It's really good. Mm. Oh my God, I need some white bread. All right, if it's Jeffrey, if it's okay with you, can we? Can I start sending you some questions? Of course. <laughs> All right, Ask so I questions. just want to say, everybody, I'm gonna, we're gonna try to get to as many questions as possible. Please be yeah. patient. I'm gonna, we're gonna. Just bear with me. All right, okay. so here's a great question that I was wondering as I was watching you do this. Could you add carrots to this recipe? And second part, could you add carrots and potatoes? And what would change if you did uh, either or both of those things? Fantastic, fantastic question. You can add absolutely anything you want. There's no rules. If you wanna add some carrots, I would suggest maybe the baby ones, you know, the little nubbins that are already done for you. You don't have to do anything like that. And add some baby potatoes? Yes, absolutely. Here, here's the thing. Things for pressure cooking is for about an hour and a half when all said and done before to the time it goes into the time it comes out. Carrots and potatoes can get very mushy under pressure if they're in there that long. So this could be a little controversial. I would wrap them in, in some foil when I put it in there. Some people are like, I will never wrap things in foil and put them in enough. It's like dangerous. Things can seep in. I 
don't think there's enough evidence. I, I'm not getting into that. Okay. I personally do that. So I think it's fine. If you don't want to do that, you can always get a little, like a pot or like a mini pot. Like they have little tiny little insert pots. You can rest and put the carrots and potatoes in and put it on top of the brisket. Um, granted, you could, you would only be able to do a half brisket like I did because it wouldn't be enough room if you did um, to a whole like six pound or whatever brisket. And then you could put a little pot and pot and put those carrots and potatoes um, in that. But I would just wrap them in foil personally and leave it on top like I did with my pot roast and it'll come out perfectly. Then when you're done, you, when you take out the brisket, just simply unwrap the foil or the, the, pot, the pot, the little pot and pot, and then just dump those veggies right into the gravy. So here's a general Instant Pot cooking question that we get a lot and a couple of people have asked. So if you're, if you are, um, if you're trying Andrew, to adapt a non-Instant Pot recipe, what do you generally advise for like the amount of liquid you should put in, right? So like, is there, a, is there like a formula you would use that if you're gonna make X, you need to do why to adapt it for the instant pot oh my god banjo you're so cute by the way if i was your doggy mom i'd give you brisket just saying okay a little piece okay not nothing with the onions on it though because that's not good for dogs can't give dogs onions so i'll give you a little piece of you ready it's a little piece Woo! he was excited for that huh all right we're good we're good we're good i gotta i gotta answer questions um so every recipe that I have in my books and anything has been adapted for an instant pot. So basically virtually any recipe can be converted to an instant pot recipe. Think about it. Like when, who would have heard a million years thought you'd make rigatoni bolognese or spaghetti and meatballs in a pressure cooker? I never thought it would be, in a, I never thought I'd be doing something like that ever. So anything, well, there's some things that can't be like, you're not going to fry in this thing, deep fry. Um, you're not going to really get a crisp unless you have the air fryer with. This thing is perfect for nothing makes anything better in terms of soups in an instant pot. Nothing. So yes, 100%. Uh, you can basically take like 80% of your cooking catalog, whatever, wherever I'm getting that number from, I don't know, and you can convert it into an instant pot recipe. Um, okay, so let's get... I'm going to go back to the, okay, talk about um, how you freeze this, right? Like you mentioned before that you're, that the brisket you're cooking right now, you're going to freeze it and save it for Rosh Hashanah in a few weeks. Um, so what, what will you do to this brisket to, to store it and freeze it? Is there anything special? Nope. Literally put it in like a, a Tupperware, a Tupperware, a Rubbermaid or whatever. Just make sure it's nice and sealed in there. Pop it in your freezer. It's as simple as that. It's really as simple as that. And then um, when the time comes to reheat it, just let it thaw a bit. And then just put it, you can put it right in your Instant Pot and just put it on the saute function and just let it bubble or put it on the stove and let it do its thing. You could absolutely freeze it. It'll last for a good six months. Do you do anything to the gravy in your sauce to like de to take the fat out? You let it sit overnight and scoop it out or you just leave it as is? No. Oh. That's a very good question. If I'm eating it right now, absolutely not. I'm eating it how it is. It's so good. However, if I put this in the refrigerator, as soon as you take it out, you're going to see a thick, almost like an ice skating rink of orange on top, which is from the fat and everything else. That, at that point, it's easy to skim it right off and dump it if you wish. However, I keep it. I let it When I reheat it up, I just let it seep right back into everything and you can't tell it's there. You don't see it. But when it gets cool, you're going to see that layer of like an orange fat on top. Um, Freema asked, and I bet this recipe is delicious, that, that the recipe calls for chili sauce and beer. Can they use that recipe in the Instant Pot for the, with the same method that you used? Wait, say that again? If their recipe calls for chili There's sauce and Chili beer. sauce and beer. Absolutely. A hundred percent. It, would you say that it would be the same, like if you had, if you just had what, three quarters of a cup of water, would you say it would be three quarters of a cup of beer to be exactly. a vegan? Okay. Exactly. Exactly. You, when you, the thing about pressure cooking is the liquid needs to be thin enough for it to be able to bubble and come to pressure. If I just put in ketchup, we're going to have problems because it's going to burn to the bottom of the pot. It's not thin. Mm. So when I mix, I, let's look at this. I had three quarters of a cup of water and a third of a cup of vinegar. So we're basically at a, a cup at that point of liquid. 
uh, combined with like th about three quarters of a cup of ketchup. So we're good in that ratio. We have more liquid than we do have thickness. And then, and, and then also the, the uh, vinegar breaks things down a bit when it's just mixed with everything. Um, so it's about making sure, you'll, you'll see all this in the introduction of my book, and I explain this to you. I have charts, by the way, in this book, what's gonna, what's gonna tell you what ratios you should do for each thing, whether it's pasta, grains, poultry, seafood, meat, beans, lentils, lentils. I love how lentils gets its own little section. Talk about being Jewish. And vegetables, and you can do whatever you want. And I give you a guideline for that. So there've been a couple of questions about a kosher brisket versus a non-kosher brisket. So I'm just gonna answer for those people. Yes, um, kosher meat can be, sal can be saltier, but I also um, still salt my meat and I use kosher meat at home. So I think it's really to your taste and you should know what you like or if you, for health reasons, need to limit your salt, then you might want to pull back on it and season it later. But when I'm making a kosher brisket at home, I'm still salt and peppering it. So I, I wouldn't say that you don't need to do that just because it's kosher, um, but just be mindful of you know whatever your taste and health needs are. Um, there was somebody who asked, what is the brand of Instant Pot that he recommends? He said earlier, it's the Instant Pot Instant Pot, that that's the one he recommends using. I will share uh, Jeffrey's, um, the links for his uh, links for his book once again in the chat. And again, if you go to the nosher.com, it's linked for you. So you can see they're available on Amazon and you should order all of them and maybe a few copies and give them as gifts. Um, we've had a number of questions about reducing the sugar in this recipe. So if you didn't want to use ketchup or brown sugar, what would you suggest using instead to still kind of imitate the sweet and sour flavor? Um, you could always use something like a stevia, like instead of brown sugar, you can use like stevia or like an erythritol, like a golden type, um, or monk fruit uh, sweetener, which is a very great substitute. Um, we could also use maple syrup, if it's more natural or raw honey in lieu of the brown sugar. But if you want it out of there completely, just leave it out. You don't have to put the brown sugar in. It's gonna add wonderfulness. And let's not forget, by the way, you're not like eating what we just put in there in terms of like uh, that sauce, like a soup. It's just a gravy. So you don't, you can put as little or as much on the brisket as you want. The brisket's already so tender and delicious. Um, just make sure after you slice it, you do marinate it a little bit. And then when you pull it out, when you wanna eat it, cause you don't want the brisket, if you're just leaving meat out, it's gonna dry out. You want to keep it nice and moist. Um, and then from there, you can, you know, you know it's not like going to be like drenched or doused in it per se, because it'll, you're just, it's just a, serving as a gravy. But if you don't want those things in there, oh, of course, you can absolutely substitute or leave them out. Sorry, I keep eating with my hands. I'm disgusting. Right? I haven't eaten all day because I was so excited to eat this tonight that I'm just like going all barbaric and just eating it. No judgment. Eat your brisket. Enjoy it. Live, mm -hmm. you'll live I'm going to have to make another one for um, a shot now. <laughs> Um, a couple of people asked, is the cooking time different if you make a full brisket or a half a brisket, or is it the same? Same time. Same time. Okay. Same time. Okay, great. Um, if you, okay. <laughs> I think we've already answered this, but we'll ask one more time. Do you freeze the brisket with the gravy or separate from the gravy? With it. With it. Okay. Keep it, you want to keep it marinated at all times as far as I'm concerned. The more that you're doing that, you don't have to worry about it ever drying out. Um, oh, it is so, I can't even, it is so tender and delicious. But as soon as I slice this up, I want to put it right into my pot of gravy and just let it sit in there. It won't dry out that way. If you're giving it a nice happy bath. Everyone's happy. Brisket's happy. I'm happy. Um, I have I have one question for you, um, which is yes. my own question. Please. Um, I'm curious, what inspired you to want to start sort of adapting recipes for the Instant Pot? I, for once upon a time, I was going to be an actor. And then I realized that apart from breaking my parents' heart, from being, becoming possibly a starving artist, uh, that I wanted stability in my life. So I went into the field of public relations and advertising where I was for about 10, 15 years-ish, and I was very unhappy doing what I did. And I was a video producer, producing branded content, and I was good at what I did, I just didn't like what I did. What I loved doing was going home, cooking, and singing show tunes. So I said to myself one day, cooking is my therapy. 
uh, I always have, a, have the latest gadgets and uh, the Instant Pot came out. I discovered it and I said, you know what? I'm going to take my love of cooking, use this Instant Pot, which so many people seem to not know what to, the first thing to do with and seem intimidated by, and maybe with some stroke of luck, put a video on YouTube and be that guy who might show people this thing isn't so scary and earn their trust on how to make meals in a revolutionary way with this thing. Started doing that in 2017. By 2018, I was no longer at my other job and I'm doing this full time now. And I don't know how this happened. And I wrote two books, the third one's coming out of the way. I am blessed and I am so fortunate. So if any of you out there have been here from the start and knew who I was prior to this and if you're following me now, I am so thankful to you. This wouldn't have happened without you. And if you're just meeting me now and you enjoy this, uh, thank you for being here. And to the countless names I saw who left the room, well, you can't hear me anyway. It's better off that you don't at this moment. So anyway, that's, that's how it worked out for me. Um, that, that's, that's great. All right, we have a few more minutes with Jeffrey. So if there's any pressing questions that we haven't gotten to, now's the time to do it. I will share the links to his books once again in the chat right now. Um, so the first one is the Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. A hundred simple recipes for spectacular results. Like this one. Right, I'm putting, <laughs> putting it in, in the chat. Here's number one. And then the second one is the, right? Did I get it right? Nope. This you is, did. This is, I, I hold think. on a second. Yeah, hold on. Before. I got I to gotta get your other one, your other link up. Jeffrey, there's a lot of people who write instant cook pot cookbooks. So, you know. Here we go. Is it and then the lighter, right? The lighter yes, step by step. Lighter. Yes. Here we go. Here so we here's go. here's the first one, the orange book. And here's the second one, the lighter book. The third right, book, which I don't have yet because it's not officially done at all, is um gonna be the yellow book. And it's gonna be all comfort food. There's gonna be a few Jewish recipes in that one. I actually have a really I like to take different cuisines and um excuse me, I say scratch my face, and I like to marry them. So uh, I'm going to have in that book, um, oh, what was it? Oh, Jewish deli fried rice, which I think is a very unique and interesting dish because it takes basically the idea of a pastrami omelet that we love to get at any of our delis, but we also gonna marry it with a soy vey teriyaki sauce and create a fabulous fried rice. Because I love egg on my fried rice. So we have things like that in there. Um, and my website, I like to, um, like, you know, like I said, marry things. So instead of, you know, Italian wedding soup, I have Jewish wedding soup. Instead of the little mini meatballs, we have little mini matzo balls in there. So it's, I just like to have a lot of play on fun existing recipes and come up with my own classics. All right. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to throw two more. Uh, Maria asked a question, Marla, Marla or Maria, I'm sorry, I can't say, asked a question. <laughs> can you make this recipe not in an spot? Yes. Just follow any traditional brisket recipe. You can use exactly what Jeffrey did. You might want to have more liquid and you are going to want to cook it. I'm going to sear it just like he did. Sear your veggies, add all your it's liquid. It's going to take longer. It's going to take longer. Cook it for three to four hours. Remove it. Slice it against the grain. Okay, I, I'm I'm skirting over this question because, like I said, tonight we're focusing on instant pot brisket. That's what the class is. So we're gonna try and stay focused on instant pot cooking. Jeffrey, can you for one for everybody one more time? I, people are asking your your preferred recommended. If you're gonna buy an instant pot, which model instant pot are you recommending people buy? Um, I would suggest getting. Start with just the duo, the Instant Pot Duo six quart. It's the best value, best price. Um, has everything you need. If you don't, you don't even bother reading the manual. It's kind of confusing. Simply go to this book, open the introduction. It is so easy to follow. There's pictures. It's telling you exactly what buttons are relevant that you need to. There's because there's extra buttons you're not going to have to worry about. Go with the six quart duo. You can make yogurt with that. You can do everything I just did tonight. You can do, go with the duo. The six quart duo is what I suggest for your first instant pot. And if you start loving it and become what we, you know, known as a pothead, then you could move on to the fancier models like the duo plus um, or the other models. They, they come up with so many models these days. It's like keeping up with it's kind of like crazy, but they're all, they have the basic functions. And I explained to you how to use every single one of them in my books, especially the next one coming out. Um, Debbie, thank you so much for your lovely comment. Debbie said she's a vegetarian, but she cooks meat for other people. 
So does my friend. Totally respect that. Thank you for the for, for the nice words. Um, um, another question was, do you ever spray the inside of your Instant Pot with like cooking spray before you use it? You know what? I never do, oddly enough. I never do. I don't think I ever really need to. But because um, I usually start with most dishes, this one I did not, off with like an olive oil or a vegetable oil or a butter. Um, and it kind of already gives it that in there. I don't, so no, the answer is no. Okay, great. That's super helpful. All right, I'm just, I, I shared Jeffrey's website is pressure, pressurelookcooking.com. That's the same on Instagram. He has a YouTube channel, so you can find him there. Find his books on Amazon or wherever you like to buy books. Um, everybody, thank you so much for coming and sharing this time with us. Jeffrey, you are um, a delight, as Lisa just shared, and it's true. You really are. Well, you're um, sweet. Thank you, Shannon. I really appreciate it. You guys are, are the you, best. Are you going to, I mean, do you, do you, should you leave us with like a little, like a little show tune maybe? Oh man, what should I sing? I don't even know. Don't tell me not to make my brisket in an oven. I don't know. <laughs> no, don't bring around a cloud to rain on my instant pot. That was awful, but you I know, can't wait. I, I want the full it. version. We we're gonna need the full full song. We'll version work on it together. But Shannon and I are both musical theater babies, so we'll work on one and we'll do a rendition. Okay. That's it. Risk it, the musical. It's coming. <laughs>